Composite Masks, also known as CFX Masks. My name is Tabitha. This is Ken Decker. He is the owner of Composite Effects. And this is Josh. He is the Mask Operations Manager um, for Composite Effects. And I do all the trade shows and social appearances for us, as well as manage all the social medias and sling the silicone and marketing all that stuff. So um, we're just kind of going to dig right into it, uh, just give you a brief history about who CFX is, how we got started. Uh, why we got started, and uh, then we'll kind of talk about some of the stuff we're currently doing, and obviously show you some masks, and of course take any questions you guys might have, and uh, like we were just doing, talk about the uh, effects industry here in Baton Rouge and Louisiana in general. So, Ken, I'm going to let you spill your beans on uh, CFX and how we got to where we are. Uh, we brought your mom. Oh, it didn't. I did bring Toxie. So, um, yeah. So we started in um, I. I started at LSU, um, you know, wanting to get into the film industry and whatnot. You know, ever as a kid, movie magic came out. I was like, I wanted to do explosives and monsters and, and special effects and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I had started with the Thirteenth Gate um, on the first year that they had moved to their current location, um, doing makeup for them, and you know, the idea was just that just to get as much experience in makeup as I could and whatnot, so that by the time I graduated, I wanted a college degree first um, before I did anything else. That way I had something to fall back on. Um, during the course of working over at the gate, um, you know, we, we started off doing glue one fun latex appliances and uh, started with a, a relatively small crew and then, you know, they started becoming, you know, placing number one on the U.S. year after year. And, and that crew got bigger and bigger, and so did the makeup job. Um, we started doing some uh, um, custom makeups and whatnot, and some of those makeups took like two and a half hours a night to apply, and then another 45 minutes at the end of the night to take off. Um, it was just taking way too long, so, you know, it's like, we gotta, we gotta find a faster way of doing this, so um, I tried. So, well, you know, I was working with some soft rubbers, so I'll try making uh, a mask out of some of those silicone rubbers instead of latex, and we'll see what we can do. Um, lots of trial and error later. Uh, the mask worked great, pulled all the movement off of it that we needed to without any glue or anything like that. A two and a half hour makeup job turned into about 15 seconds to put the thing on. Um, and silicone masks were born. Uh, we found the process, and about a year later, we took it to um, That was 2006, yeah. Uh, we, the first mask I made was in 05. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, their actors started taking some of those masks home and the industry was born. Um, fast forward to now, um, we operate, uh, we have three legs that we stand on. Um, obviously the masks, which is the, the most well-known and the most public, you know, face of the company. Um, Next is uh, props or special effects um, for movies. Um, and for that, we do mostly out-of-state work. Uh, we're, we're, we're very close with a few uh, handful of prop masters. Um, so, you know, not a lot of people know that like every, every time you see a piece of jewelry or an actor or a gun or or something. Anything metallic. Basically. Yeah, and anything that has, has weight or mass. Anything that um, usually makes contact with an actor in an aggressive way, shape, or form. <laughs> if, it's, if it's a gun, um, there's always a plastic version so that the armor doesn't have to safety the gun. We all know, you know how, right how important that is right now. So, um, so you know, there's, there's usually, um, and, and that can be everything from a grenade launcher to, you know, a, 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 a a western style pistol or so something like pistol. that. Um, if you see anybody on a horse, everything that that actor is wearing on a horse is rubber um, because horses are really, really expensive to train. And should uh, you know, should that actor fall or the horse fall or something like that, they don't want anything that could damage the horse. They don't really care too much about the actor. Um, you know, and then there's also um, sometimes weight issues. I know for like, uh, we did um, all the prop work for uh, Preacher. Preacher. And there's one character in there that's got, you know, the, the, the two revolvers and he had to come in and, and, you know, 
walk into a bar and, and hold the bar up with, with these two revolvers and, um, you know, and then deliver a minute and a half monologue. Um, well, about 30 seconds in, you know, on your third take, your hands are doing like that, so they needed plastic versions because that was really expensive to remove the post. Um, you know, we wanted to make them plastic versions of those guns that could fire blanks and stuff like that, so that, you know, so there's a lot of practical reasons for why um, specialty prop shops like us exist. Um, and then the third leg that we stand on is, uh, is the medical industry. Um, a lot of what we do in the silicone realm um, can be applied to making medical training simulators and stuff like that. Um, we, we, we know a lot about a lot of weird and different types of surgeries now just based on, you know, like, some of the, the stuff that our clients will ask us to make and, you know, we'll consult, you know, the surgeons will consult with us and whatnot and say, you know, like, whenever I cut into a heart, it feels like this or, you know, it's got to feel like that, you know, so, I mean, we'll, we'll go to a store or we'll go to a butcher shop and buy some pig hearts and, like, cut into them and make sure that, um, uh, you know, that, that the rubber and the additives that we're putting in the rubber will, you know, give the, give the surgeon the same feel that he'd be feeling on a scalpel. You know, um, and a lot of that kind of stuff is, is really fun to know that, um, you know, what you're doing is, uh, is helping people. Always working. <laughs> uh, I never did the term I've known of. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we employ about 26 employees right now. 26 full-time employees. We have several more contractors beyond that. Um, we are open year-round. Uh, we have a 20,000 uh, 20, square foot facility on Industrial Plex. Um, and, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what we specialize in right now is the masks. Obviously, that's our bread and butter, but bread and butter this time of year. Um, we do quite a few sales to haunted attractions as a whole, but there's also a whole different market of individual buyers. So just a home haunter or somebody who works at a haunt or even cosplayers. They're just mask enthusiasts. And mask, mask enthusiasts who just want them to collect them and just literally put them on their shelf to stare at them, which we're okay with too. Um, we have started going to multiple different conventions. We started only going to our industry trade show, which is called Trans World in St. Louis every year in March. Um, well, last, this year was in May, but uh, going back to March. Uh, and then myself and Josh were actually from Southern California, and once CFX got the license with uh, Game of Thrones with HBO, they were um, asked to bend at San Diego Comic Con, which is a mighty big feat because there is usually a very long waiting list for that kind of space. A so. lot of vendors will wait about 10 years to get into the Yes. Um, so it, we were, it, it's the biggest Comic Con. Um, so we were very thankful to be able to work with uh, HBO to get that space, and with me, I've been going to Comic Con most of my life, and we knew that space, Ken knew the product, and we also knew the product as well, because before Josh and I came to work for CFX, we were, and still are, consumers of the product. We own an operator on haunted attractions, and we love the CFX mask so much, we just want to spread the word with everybody. Um, and so because of that, we started doing a lot more cosplay and individual uh, buyers because there are a lot of people who go to Comic-Con who either want something specific like the licensed items or want something a little bit more creative that they're looking for for a, uh, a cosplay that they're doing. A lot of people who do run fairs come to us as well. So yeah, we, we do a lot of license, or had a lot of licenses. <laughs> uh, we are slowly stocking new licenses uh, for, pardon me, for more customer work. Um, so, but these are, are they live and are Frankenstein that were licensed from Universal? This yeah. wasn't licensed, but we produced all the um, the masks for Six Flags for their for their for the, the uh, that, Mr. That's that's commercial. Yeah. 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 That yeah. Yeah. commercial. Now yeah. we wait caveat. We did not do any of the makeup work for the commercial. That was all professional makeup. Yes. Uh, yes. We just so supplied all the masks for the in park entertaining uh, dancers. Um, I got that ingrained in my brain. So instantly, I was like, I know that guy. Now it's a uh, yeah, so we do a lot of customi customized masks for cosplayers and stuff like that. And that's and that's really like very rarely does a mask come through the shop at this point that's just like ordered exactly like it's pictured on our website. 
Um, and we like that, you know, they're like, they, each person that's ordering one of those masks are, are, are doing that to, um, you know, fit their own needs and, and kind of really make it their own. Um, you know, and our artists are always more than happy to, you know, kind of make that happen. Well, the most wonderful thing is starting to see effects with redesigns. Imp, Kresge, and Belial, right? right? Basically an imp goblin character, a demon character, and a zombie. And now we're upwards of 180 masks. Plus. Um, yeah, I was going to say plus, custom because we designs, have some that yeah, are still in sculpting phase well. and um, custom work that we've done. So very rarely will you see the same mask come to the shop. Uh, you know, I think we have like three different imps on our shelf okay. right now. For the killer clowns. <laughs> Um, this so this is, actually, is our soccer clown, which is normally, you know, just a flesh-colored guy. Josh, you buddy mouth. Why don't you put the imp on so that they can do it in character? Um, and that was going to be kind of my next segue. Is the beauty okay, of we'll show you how these guys work. One of the reasons why they were such an improvement and a wonderful invention for the haunted house industry and just costuming in general is they're easy on and easy off. So yeah, this is our imp character. He has a custom paint job. This is one that I just keep around the office or for events like this. <laughs> so you can quickly be coming in. Character. Ah. Yeah, you know, and then you just look at him and that's awesome. Ah. Very supple and mimics skin very well. So most of our sculpts are designed close to your facial features so that when you exaggerate your face, it moves nearly identically to you. Of course, when you get into something a little bit bigger like stuff, well, that changes a bit in the mouth, but we do accommodate that by having a larger jaw and different options for you. And then when you're done, really easy to take your back off. Fix your hair a little bit. <laughs> but you know, for the haunt industry, this was really important because it allowed an actor to get in and out of a scene quickly. Um, if they needed to break character because they had somebody freaking out in their scene, for example, because they could they could take the mask off and, and, and break character real quick like that. Um, also, too, at the end of the night, when you're done, easy to get out of it, easy to get out of makeup. There was no glue or anything like that to worry about. Um, silicone is sanitizable, so you know you can douse it with uh, with alcohol real easy and um, and keep it clean. Don, no soap and water. Yeah, easy to wash. Yeah, there's a lot of problems, uh, at least there were, uh, in the mask, I mean, mask collecting community because latex masks are really hard to keep in the condition that you buy them in because um, latex as a rubber just naturally wants to corrode or break down and it deteriorates over time, especially if it's left in the sun, especially out here when it's left in any kind of humidity. Um, so silicone doesn't do nearly any of that, uh, which is why a lot of mask collectors and especially mask wearers prefer to use the silicone masks. Um, and it's not for everybody, and it's not for every environment, but for the uses that people want to use them for, they are amazing tools for the trade of metal. Do you guys have any questions for us? Um, and it doesn't have to be mass related, it can be <laughs> other industry related. Um, uh, did you show them the wand? Uh, uh, we do have a stunt wand from, so going back to some of our film work that we have done, um, some of our most recent work that we've done was uh, our mother for Disney. We did uh, all yes. of the. Can you yeah. 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 Uh, we did all of the wands. Yes, that all of the wands. The so that's um, a stunt wand right there. We also did the actual crystal wands. Yes. Yeah. And the lighted and wands. And ones that yeah. were made as well. That were. There were also <laughs> wands that were made for the special effects crew so that they could shoot pyro through them. There was another one that was made that was that had a cable control system that was puppeted. Um, so they could like, you know, stand off camera and kind of like wiggle the wand or make it, you know, wiggle and wag. Um, How many of you guys were, you said you knew about us before tonight. Anybody else knew that CFX was here mm -hmm. before tonight? I'm in school for biomedical engineering and I want a STEM lab at an all girls high school. That's cool. <laughs> so I do like STEM theater stuff uh, a lot as of late and uh, so I'm on Jessica's page. Uh, so that's uh, wonderful. That's super. Uh, like, well, because some of the things we do, if you do things with anatomy and the human body, is we do props, yeah. like that heart that's over there. We have a full internal organ kit of guns that we sell that fit inside the, the inner of a skeleton. We do brains as well, two different types of brains. One that's like a foam fill or a gel, mm, silicone foam fill, excuse me. Thank or you. A gel fill, However, you, you, uh, where it's, you know, you wind a little bit of different weight. Um, and you can custom paint, so if you want to be like, hey, this is what this looks like, don't smoke. 
there you go. Um, so they're a great tool for education as well. We do a lot of work with escape rooms um, who do very tactile based things. So those and a lot of them like are the medically art. based, and so yeah. they want something that's realistic. So yeah. they're yeah. a lot of yeah. full scale yeah. humans. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do yeah. research in cancer medicine, so like oh. pretty print full scale humans for yeah. radiation research, and so that's amazing. anytime you can learn new techniques for things, that's yeah. kind of like my that's my love. Wonderful, that's so amazing. amazing. So like I was like I have to come to you. Oh cool. But I mean, you have the shop local, and you are more than welcome. You have to call and kind of schedule it right now. We're coming just out of our busiest part of the season. Okay. Yeah, if you want to come by the shop ever and yeah. you know, say hello. Could I possibly work on getting some of my high school students to come? Absolutely. Because like, I do, I'm teaching technical theater in the spring, and so we're going to do everything from projection mapping to like, you know, building dioramas of stages that they have to custom make all of the parts for. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Info's on that flyer. So they're just yeah. start the business card as well. They'll just go to our general um, our office manager or myself, mm -hmm. but just yeah. mention this meeting like, and then getting yeah. them involved in like high tech like high skill set areas as early as possible mm -hmm. you know like i'm sure everybody in the room is like i wish i could have learned this earlier or this well and there and there are a lot of fields so we a, a lot of our employee base um has aspirations for going into hollywood and, and many of them are in hollywood and um you know we've we've worked with a lot of artists that have you know come from high school, worked in the shop for a few years, and we're known enough in Hollywood that when you put CFX on a resume, um, you know, all of those studios, um, nobody cares about your, your college education, they care about your portfolio, and what kind of work you do, and you know, what kind of experience, in, industry relative experience that you have, um, that people can vouch for you on, you know, so, for us, I wish that I knew that before I went to college. Um, I'm very glad that I went to college. It put me in the right place at the right time and in front of the right people. Um, but you know, if, if if I hadn't done what I did, I, that debt would have been crushing coming out of college. So you know, there's there's definitely um, I think better ways for folks that truly want to go into that industry, um, more productive ways to get into it. Especially in the effects industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Primarily. Yeah. There's, there's not very A lot of shop experience yeah. and work time. There's very few <clears throat> effects schools that are out there that will teach you everything you need to know because the industry is, it's, there, there's a little bit of well guarded there's secrets in the industry. industry. You know how it is. Um, the vast, but the vast there's also a lot of, of people trying to get into it. So it's, it's hard to either get in the door or be, be taken seriously enough that, like, no, I do know. My, my, you know my stuff, I do know what needs to be done on this, you know. So necessarily, class experience isn't what they're looking for, they just want, they want to know if you're competent, they want to know if you're able to do um, what they need you to do. Well, and we, you know, just in, in the multitude of movies that we've worked in, um, <laughs> we, we know a lot of folks in the industry, and, and in a lot of cases, with the right people, um, you know, in addition to doing um, the prop work and stuff like that, I also uh, do some uh, effects and pyro work. Uh, I work on a few pyro crews. Um, the biggest one at this point is uh, Burning Man. Sweet. All right. I'm, on, I'm on the man burning crew. Um, so, you know, we, we get to, to rub elbows with a lot of different people, and if there's somebody that's coming in that's like, hey, I want to do the next step, um, you know, making a phone call is, usually goes a long way. In what instance? I mean, just fireworks, lamb effects. So for set work, um, it's kind of whatever the doctor ordered, everything from like sand cannons to, you know, roll over cars to, um, uh, you know, just various flame effects, um, you know, a lot of propane effects and stuff like that. Sure. Um, or like firework shows and whatnot. And, and just so that it's said, I am not a licensed pyrotechnician. Um, and I always, assist and work under far more qualified and knowledgeable people than myself. I have no aspirations to become a licensed 
license card. It's, it's a lot of work. It's, 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 it's a tremendous amount of work, and, and if you're doing that, you need to be, for the safety's sake, you need to be doing that and just that. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot of fun to help out, and it's a lot of fun to, or, or useful to help out so that whenever you're building a prop that will have pyro included in it, um, whether it's a wand that needs to shoot fire or a prop gun that needs to fire a gas round or uh, Me too. Uh, <clears throat> we did for one of the one of the faces of death we uh, welded this like big thing that they had to like use the like explosives and, explosive and drop it through, through a floor and stuff like that. So you know having those experiences and working on those crews even even for the small amount that I do. Um, helps a lot in being able to communicate with the people, those, you know, those folks that are on set. So the prop master can hand me off to the, the pyro guys or the effects guys and I can have an intelligent conversation with them, um, you know, and, and already come in and kind of speak to some of that lingo and, and know what they're going to be dealing with. Um, Burning Man is all uh, consumer grade, mm -hmm. pyro, except for the big gas cans. So we do, we have just restarted what we like to call the shop for my Thursdays, where we are going to do some fun, small demonstrations of pyrotechnics. Oh, like demonstrations, more like experiments. Oh, shit. Experiments. 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 I can't wait to use a fire extinguisher. Gary, I've got some cool brewers if you want to come to it. See, making connections, don't worry. So if someone were to want to work with CFX or just in the industry in general, um, is it, there's technical knowledge of how to create these things, these things that you manipulate, or, and there's artistic knowledge of being able to use the creativity to come up with them. Is there, is there one that you guys prefer to start starting off with? Not um, really. Or which one is so easier we, to build? We're all kind of split up a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely more hands-on and they're working on the stuff um, so, so there's, there's there's some aspects of our production that require an artistic eye um, and there's other aspects that require just a tremendous amount of craftsmanship and there's other aspects that require just patience um, you know and, and there are some people that do really really amazing work on one project for about two weeks at a time and then they need to be doing something different um, those people do really excellent in the film industry because your your job is always changing. Um, you know, and some of our medical products are I need to make the same thing a hundred times a month for the next six years. You know, and and some people do really well with like you know coming in and just zoning out and knowing exactly what they're going to be doing. And you know, I made twenty of those things this week. I'm going to try and make twenty two next week. You know, and how can I refine that process? Um, you know, and, and there's other people that um, fall somewhere kind of in between. Um, and we're fortunate because since we do house those three legs of the company in, in one building, or you know, those three legs of production, um, we have a lot of leeway to be able to bring people in that, are, that have different talents or different skill sets and be able to kind of move them around um, to one project or another. It's not always what you know somebody wants to be doing, or we can't always guarantee that you're going to come in and, and be really excited about that project, um, you know, every single day. But you know, we, there's there's enough to go around that um, it's it's a very fun place to work. Um, we have a really relaxed work environment. Um, even dogs yeah, come to work. <laughs> yeah, it's a dog friendly place. So uh, we have different level positions. We have entry level positions. Um, you know, something is basic as roto casting our head forms that these masks are on um, up to obviously something as complex as our mold making and our sculpting um, and all of that stuff even up to our beautiful painters that uh, paint all these wonderful masks. Okay, so every mask is hand painted on everything that you see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean it, 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 when people come in and they say well what do I need to know to work for CFX? Um, just basically need to have a good attitude, um, be able to be, you know, fairly craft oriented, you know, and, and, and uh, lift 20 pounds over your head. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else we can teach. 
um, and we like to teach. You know, we, we understand that the the world of silicone is is not something that most people you know know how to do. Um, it's an expensive material to work with. Um, you know, so it's it's not something that we really unless somebody's coming from Hollywood. I've never run into somebody that knows how to work with the material before they come into our shop. Um, but as long as they've got a good attitude, um, you know, and they're teachable. Um, now, willingness to learn goes a long way. Yep. So, like, physically, how do you make a mask? Do you start off with a base color and then paint in all the details and features? Or is there, like, a standard head shape that everything Yes, so, <laughs> Right? Yeah, so That's wait. a short answer. We start with uh, a sculpting armature similar to this right here. Uh, we'll add clay to it into the sculpt, whatever design we want. So again, this guy right here started looking like this. We add the clay to make it look exactly like that. It'll then go through a molding process uh, where we create production molds for it. Then we run the silicone through those molds and they come out as a blank casting. So it would come out looking, I guess on this guy right here, this guy is just pure white. He comes out of the mold, right? Um, and so then it goes through a few different processes. It, what, three different people touch the mask before uh, it's at least, least, at least, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, all the all the seam lines are trimmed out of it. The eyes are cut out. Everything's kind of opened up. It gets ready for paint. The paint is our finishing department, and they kind of do in add-ons. Uh, then it goes to hair. Painting. Yeah. So, like this guy right here, these these bolts right here are actually added onto the mask after the actual casting of it. So, yeah. And then paint will take care of it, and then we have that. For the, the stalker, for example, his his teeth are cast separately and they're glued in after the fact. Each each sculpt has its own mold. Um, you know, and, and yeah, like it's a simple simple piece of we'll cast it, we'll cast the base of the mask, uh, you know, the predominant color so of the mask. Um, so it's, it's some, painted in there, but yeah, and some molds or some masks have so different nuances when it comes to how they perform. perform. Uh, Frankenstein over here, obviously, he's great with his bolts, but with they live, we wanted to keep the iconic super domed bubble eye shape, so we played with some vacuum form pieces and Universal said yes, so we're great um, So, you know, some of them have uh, real uh, resin or glass eyes. Um, we have a spider mask called Huntsman that actually has a lot of those eyes. We have one that, that is called Teratoma, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's but yeah, like fingers and hands and eyes and teeth, and so it's got 22 ish different eyes of shapes and colors, colors and stuff. So, but I mean, like, whenever we're designing a mask, um, you know, we've also got to bear in mind, you know, like the worst case scenario. Um, so, if somebody gets hit, does that thing that's right next to the eye can that get broken and go into somebody's side? So, besides speed, what was the other reason why you chose to do silicone masks for that? Really, just durability and consistency. And so then you see, like, I'm pretty. Well, no, because the tips are really good every night. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's always a good thing. Yeah, that is another thing. Um, but what I was what I was getting at is that there are a lot of companies out there or people who do makeups for uh, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Oh, well, they use real nails. Where they will use real nails in the masks and or their makeup. And you don't want somebody going by and doing this on your head. No. Even if you don't, yeah. those nails, that's not. Uh, so, so for Pinhead, for example, we made the nails. Say how breathable is silicone mask? Arm silicone mask? And if and do you have to like? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not so much. I was gonna say lube up. Like I said, it's kind of not like latex at least. Yeah. So you saw how I kind of put that one on that it doesn't really need anything. You are gonna sweat. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just it's, it's yeah. rubber on skin contact. You get a little bit of sweating going on. Uh, honestly, I you kind of get a contact sweat, and then after that, you, I don't sweat it as much. You know, some people do. They, they it's only going to get as yeah. warm as you get. Yeah. And, and for people that sweat a lot, antiperspirant. Yeah. Deodorant. Yeah. Okay. Um, goes a long way. It does. It does actually help stump your nails. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So what we have is uh, mostly male masks male fit masks that we have. We also do have uh, a little bit of a smaller design for our female fit masks. Um, we're expanding that a little bit more. We're working on expanding the, the shape of that 
core of basically how it sits on your face. Um, and then we're going to have some more designs coming out for that. Um, but it's one size fits most. We do have a certain circumference that we recommend. Um, the silicone is durable. It does stretch. Yeah. The only thing that kind of stops performing, as we say, is that it, the facial features may distort a little bit and just may not be as comfortable as the So we, we have a display demo that we take with us to trade shows that's with like an air pump and it'll inflate it for us. But I mean, you can see I'm, I'm pulling pretty hard on this guy right now and it, it'll be fine. We do this all the time. Uh, the silicone we use stretches nine times the spiritual size that you could have. I think it's uh, nine or ten. Yeah, nine, nine or ten times its normal size, and it'll go right back to its same. Way, way more than you will ever need to stretch it during yeah. the course. I just of found all the pictures. I think a few of Wes like pulling. So, oh yeah. yeah. So if you have a bald head, sometimes they're kind of fun to get on because they do kind of stick to bald heads a little bit. Um, so you can powder them. Although if you powder the mask, it does lose a little bit of that. Right, because you, you want it to be as sticky as possible. Um, um, and yeah, like if you have a really big head, basically the mask will fit. It'll just you know <laughs> be very thin eyed. And... Um, there are a lot of women, obviously, who like to wear the masks. And for me, I do. I wear the masks. Um, I can wear them up to eight plus hours at a time. Um, I usually just have to throw my hair back into one solid braid. Halloween. Um, <laughs> sometimes, depending on the design of the mask, if it's a like a natural human or something that's got a little bit more of a slender back design, um, putting like the traditional like wig cap, the wig hair braids and the wig cap will really help minimize that weird shape in the back of your spine. But if I'm in like our Naga, which is a snake mask, that pattern and that kind of already will break up where my braid would be sitting, or like a long ponytail. Um, I recommend that for a lot of uh, men who also like to wear masks who have long hair. My dad and my brothers are some of them, um, as well as men who have beards and facial hair. Um, our masks are beard and facial hair friendly to a degree, depending on your length. Um, but we can also accommodate a lot of our masks to cut that mouth part out if you want to highlight your beard. Those masks, so. But yeah, so pretty much like Ken was saying, the sky's the limit when it comes to CFX, when it comes to masks, props. Anything you might need for the medical industry. Um, we're very proud to be a Baton Rouge born and bred company, um, as well as having an LSU alumni um, found our company. And we are very happy to be here with the community and sharing all the good word of the effects industry here with you guys. And we are hiring. So if anybody knows <laughs> anybody that's looking for a job, we're always hiring. Yeah. Like we were saying, from entry level to above. Um, but you can find that information out on our website. All the info is on the flyer um, in front of you. Feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you aren't already. Um, it's always fun to kind of see what shenanigans we're up to. Um, tomorrow I should be posting that on my Thursday post. Um, I might have to do a little bit of editing, so it might be next Thursday, so we'll see what's going on here. Um, but we're always doing different CFX lives, as we call them, our live streams from the CFX shop. Um, and actually in two weeks, we're heading out to our last trade show of the year. We're going out to IAPA in Orlando, Florida, which is a huge, theme park and uh, museum and F, uh, right. Bay Native Human Center and different attraction um, theme show. So we're going to be out there, so we will definitely be doing some live streams from that show. All right, and if there's any other questions, we will happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for your time. And uh, yeah. <laughs> the warms are yours to keep. Yes, yeah. please. No. <laughs> no. Everybody, CFX keep you warm. Hey, Grandpa, we need to get you a eyebrow wax or something.